Okay, welcome everybody. We are glad you're with us for session three of the new advisor um, development program. If this is the first time you're joining joining us, um, later on I'll direct you where to find um, uh, set, uh, recordings of the first two sessions so that you can get uh, caught up and take a look at those. But um, today we're going to be focusing on regional engagement and college project which are the um, levels, oh, I, lost I know what you mean, <laughs> hold on one second, which are the uh, two levels, the third and fourth level of the five-star chapter plan, right? So for a little refresh, uh, when we started these sessions, we talked about uh, levels one and two, and, and that was all about, you know, getting your membership ready and your leadership ready um, uh, to, to, to become engaged with your chapter. And levels three and four is the beginning, beginning of doing, you know, enhanced chapter engagement by connecting with your region and, and then college project in level four. So we're glad you're here again. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat box and uh, we'll get started. Um, my name is Patty Van Adder. I serve as the Chapter Outreach and Development Coordinator for Phi Theta Kappa. I'm a former advisor and a former regional coordinator um, and I get to work with all of you advisors in um, supporting your role as an advisor with the chapter, helping you get your uh, feet squarely planted and feeling confident about what you're doing because I really think the role of the advisor as you get through it and I know at times that there it, it can be a little like oh what have I got myself into but when you see the growth in your student membership and what they're able to complete and what they do when they move on from the community college and and into their professional careers and 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 education you'll be say you know what i had a little hand in that and you'll be super proud of it so um i think that i'm glad that you're all here our um a student engagement uh, team is led by Dr. Blake Ellis. He's our chief engagement officer. He couldn't be with us today, but he sends his very best and hopes to connect with all of us, uh, all of you soon at another session. We have other members of the team. I believe Susan Edwards is here. I'm not sure. If not, she is our associate vice president of honors programs and undergraduate research. Jennifer Stanford is here, and you'll be hearing a lot from her. Yeah, hi Jennifer. She's our Associate Vice President of Program Implementation. Um, and you, I already introduced myself. And Reagan Chastain is our Curriculum Designer. She's with us today. If you've had any um, you know, uh, time to take a look at the PTK EDGE programs or when you do in the future, just think about Reagan. She puts all those things together um, and does a, a remarkable job. And, and of course, uh, Jennifer with uh, everything Hallmarks and everything College Project and everything, everything, right? And so you have lots of years of experience here um, to support you uh, through your journey and ask us questions. We love questions, please. It helps each of us learn, right? We might not, we might not think of a question, but somebody has done that for us. So please feel free. So like we were talking about uh, today, we're going to focus on um, levels three and four of the five star chapter development plan. We talked about the first couple levels in previous sessions. Um, and that five star chapter plan is the blueprint um, in building and maintaining um, a strong and engaged chapter. And it's something that happens uh, every year. There's a, a calendar year that's affixed to the plan where we ask you to do activities that will, you know, not only build chapter engagement, but also help your students build those necessary necessary skills that they'll need to go out into the workforce or continue on in their uh, educational careers. It does have five levels, right? And everybody, you know, we ask everybody to set a goal and what your chapter will achieve. And I will say before I go any further, you know, you can set a one star goal, but I'm going to call you and harangue you and ask you to change it. So five, because we believe that every chapter can be a five-star chapter, right? It's, um, it's about recognition. It's not about competition. It's about bringing an, a lot of opportunities to your members and also to the college and students that aren't even members of Phi Theta Kappa to participate in. Um, regional involvement is at level three, right? And so you're saying, okay, well, I just know my campus, I know my chapter, I know my college. What are you talking region here? So we're going to talk a little bit how your chapter fits into the bigger picture of one of the 29 regions of Phi Theta Kappa. 
And then we're going to take a look at College Project, right? That's level four. That's enhanced engagement where you are working on something that will increase, build, maintain your relationship with your college's administration and also make an impact, whether it's on the college campus or in the community. Um, and all of those activities that we're talking about, you know, happen between January and December. So if any of you are attending for the first time and you're going, okay, this woman's crazy. This is July. How am I going to get all this done in December? I promise you there are many chapters in this, in this society that are on summer break. Um, and they don't really pick things up until, you know, late August, September. It is doable. And we are here to help you um, get through all of those um, activities as well. Again, it's non-competitive and it's about, you know, recognition being guaranteed for the level that's achieved, right? The certificate, it's really important. Their recognition is given, you know, uh, in, nor in many ways, whether you attend Catalyst in April or with your college and a certificate, it's really phenomenal. And it's really important for a student or a member of your chapter to be able to say, I'm part of a five-star chapter, right? And, and before I go into the regional thing, that's one of the ways that regions also um, are able to gain recognition, right? The more active our, their chapters are in the region, the more recognition the regions receives. And I come from, used to uh, be a, a coordinator for the middle states region, and we were very competitive when it came to that, right? And we very we took pride in the amount of chapters that were able to complete the five-star plan. And it's all about, you know, celebrating all of that. So when we say getting involved at the regional level, what does that mean, right? It, and there's, there's, there's two um requirements under the level right the first one is the chapter attends at least one regional event right and the that regional event could be virtual it could be you know at at a location it could be you know however they are holding a regional event as long as you attend at least one in the span of the year you're good right and we're going to talk about how you're going to find out how to learn where your regional events are and then the second um, requirement is to do one of these regional activities, right? Whether you have a student who sees what these things, these people called regional officers and wants to maybe consider serving in that role in the future, um, or it's your chapter who has done something that you feel is really good that you would like to share, whether it was, um, you know, brainstorming an honors in action project or how you're doing um, awareness on your campus. And maybe you want to share what you're doing with um, the region in that way. And you, and you uh, take that leadership role on at a regional meeting. Participate in a regional project almost I would say all 29 regions do some sort of a regional project where they are asking you to participate in either a leadership activity or a service project. You participate that with that in that with your chapter, that counts. If attending a regional event is too far, if you have a chapter that's close to you and you want to collaborate on a project, whether it's honors in action or, or anything else, and you collaborate with another chapter, that counts as well. And another great way to um, participate um, in a regional activity is advisors serving on the regional advisory board. You know, every region has a regional coordinator and they are supported by their regional advisor boards. Um, and so that's an opportunity that where you can um, participate in the region as well. There are lots of fun. Oh my goodness, the picture. How about that? It's the Middle States region. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I didn't I didn't make this PowerPoint. I just want you to know. Um, but so that's what regional camaraderie looks like. And it, it's just a lot of fun. And if you think, um, you know, what you're doing with your chapter, as far as fellowships concerned, getting involved with your region in a fellowship activity or an event or attending whatever they're doing, it's huge, right? You get to meet other people, you get to network, and it's really a whole lot of fun. So how do you know where your region is, right? So what, what, what region you're in? So we have a divisional map, and we'll share the link um, to get to that map. You'll find it on the portal. Um, there are four divisions, 29 regions, and you'll see on the map um, where everybody is located, right? So we have division one, which is, you know, the northeast, and then division two, the southeast, 
we have the center in Division Three, and then out west Division Four. So um, you'll see the states listed under the uh, under each of the uh, on the left hand side, and of course our international chapters, right? So this is where you can find out which region you belong to, right? We have a couple of regions that are combined states, like the middle states in New England. There are a, a compilation of multiple states in their regions, right? And then we have those that are single states. They're just so big, like Texas and Michigan and Florida, right? They are their own regions. Okay. How do you connect with your region, right? There are, you'll find this on the portal portal as well when you log in there's a regional directory where you can just go in and look for you tell what state you're in and it'll tell you what region you belong to there's also a link where you can learn more about your regional leadership right who are our um who is my regional coordinator? Who are the regional officers of the region? You know, how do we make a connection with them? There's a link there. And then also regional events. Now I will say um, in the spring usually, so let's, let's talk about spring 2022. Most all regions held a regional convention, right? Uh, to celebrate uh, the work of the chapters um, on the regional level. And then um, in the summer, most regions will provide some sort of summer institute or training of some sort um, to help uh, the new guards of the chapters um, learn more about engaging in society programs. Um, you can find all of that information at regional events or by connecting with your regional coordinator. And uh, you will see that uh, you know they will be able to share with you when their next regional events are this is really important um you know step for you either you or your chapter officers can also connect with regional officers as well in that matter so usually now that we're at the end of july we'll see a couple more regions do summer institutes until through august and then fall comes and usually I, I'm going to say usually, I'm pretty sure every region <laughs> um, has an event in the fall. It's either a fall honors in action or a fall leadership conference. Some are at, in person and some are um, virtual still, right? And so it doesn't matter either way if you're participating in those events, that counts, right? But it, it's more than it just counting. It's what you get out of um which you walk away from the event uh, from, right? And so why is it important? This is our um, Colorado, Wyoming region. I love this uh, this picture. This is their, their team. I believe this was taken at Catalyst last year. But w some of the, the major things that you get, students get are, you know, they get to expand their network as, as an advisor, um, in the state of Delaware, um, I had many students who had never left the state of Delaware when they went to their first regional event in New Jersey or in Pennsylvania. And so it expands their network, um, gives them uh, better opportunities to explore, right? Professional development. Um, the professional development that you can get at regional events is, is, is quite unique, right? They bring in experts and speakers and, and, and all sorts of things where students can engage in um, the professional development and all sorts of topics, whether it's motivational, whether it has something to do with transferring or scholarships or anything. Tons of opportunities that um, are, are available to them. My favorite thing at a regional event is the leadership is the leadership training, right? A lot of our regions will use the leadership development series, or they'll pro provide a leadership speaker, and they'll um, have really um, informative discussions about developing leadership philosophy or ethical leadership and what to do with your leadership now that you know you have it, right? How to expand upon it. Um, Education in build on building your own chapter. There is no greater petri dish than a regional event to learn from other chapters about what they're doing. We don't call it stealing; we call it borrowing. Right? Um, it's a great time, to, especially new advisors, to meet with other advisors to say, "Okay, how do you get everybody to accept membership? You're a reach chapter. How did you do that?" Right? It's those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Because in the region, the colleges are, especially if it's a if it's a single state, everybody in the in that state pretty much knows the what's going on with the community colleges in that state, and you can work off of each other using ideas and, and tweaking them a little bit, making them fit yours, and it's just an awesome opportunity um, for you to get more information on how to build your chapter. 
and fellowship. There's not there's a, there's there's a couple of things in, in, a, in a regional event that you walk away with friends for a lifetime. I met my best friends many years ago um, at a, my first regional event as a student. Um, it, it's just you get to meet so many different people. You get to hear so many stories. You get to learn what Phi Theta Kappa time really is because it runs about 10 minutes late. And we have the longest goodbyes ever, right? It, we'll say, okay, we'll see you soon. And then you're walking and okay, we'll see you soon. And you don't, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a wonderful um, feeling to be uh, with those that um, you can relate with and work with and um, make an impact with, right? And so um, these are the really important reasons why you should get involved with the region. And we have 29 outstanding um, creative, imaginative um, leaders of regions. And so I encourage you to uh, make, a, make a connection with your regional coordinator to get to know who they are and see what the region is doing. And uh, it's just a, a big, it's just, it's just a lot of fun on a small but big level, if that makes any sense, because usually after the regional engagement comes Catalyst in April. And when you are there sitting with your region and, and making all that hoopla and, 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 and celebrating what your region has been able to do, it's just, it's just a whole lot of fun. So I encourage you. If you have any questions about connecting with your regional with your region please let us know and uh, we will help you with that as well so it's all about the third level um, we're going to turn it over to Jennifer Stanford who's going to talk to you more about college project and level four all right thank you Patty and um, college project I just want to say first before I, I dive into College Project that if you came with a question, we know that when you're new, it may be that you feel like you don't even know enough to ask a question yet. But if you do have a question, go ahead and put that in the chat. If it's not related to this presentation, we can at least make sure you get an answer. If Reagan, Patty, or myself can't answer it uh, here, we, we definitely can put you in touch with a person who can. So our main goal is that if you are spending time with us on a summer, summer afternoon, we want to make sure that you get your questions answered uh, so this time is most productive. So uh, Patty was talking about level three, all about our regions, and then level four is where the five-star plan focuses on a really important project for building that administrator support for your chapter. And some of you are very fortunate that you already have uh, some great administrative support, and that's wonderful. Uh, this project has as its goal, making sure that that relationship stays strong. And if you're thinking, wow, we really could use some more support uh, for our chapter on the campus, then this is a great way to, to really start that foundation and help the chapter and really the college see the chapter as a partner, not just another student club on campus, but really a, an organization that helps raise the profile of all uh, community college students and the, the mission that community colleges have. And so first and foremost, it is uh, about that relationship. It's not simply a service project. I know sometimes there is a misconception there that a college project is the chapter kind of deciding on their own what they're going to do to um, you know, benefit the school. But this really is uh, it's it's going to you know, certainly benefit the school. But it has to start with the discussion first with the college administration, preferably the college president. Uh, but another top administrator is fine if you're not able to meet with your president. And then it's a discussion about what related to the college's priorities at this moment in time, the chapter can do to help support those priorities. And uh, we're going to show you some examples of you know, how you can uh, determine that on your campus working with your students. Uh, and then the other thing that I'll point out on this slide is the joint project. So even after you have that discussion, it's not meant for the chapter to do the project by themselves. We really want it to be a joint project. So that um, may be that you're not working directly with the, the college president, but they may direct you to other departments on campus, other staff, 
faculty um, areas, maybe even maintenance or facilities for you to partner with on completing the project. So Patty, if you'll go to the next one. So there are lots of resources for you. Um, you know, certainly I, the sessions that we're having during the summer and throughout the year, um, these are resources. But when you are meeting with your chapter leaders, we want you to know that there are other sources that you don't have to remember everything that we've said during this session. You can easily access um, the activity guide. This is fairly new. And so you have joined Phi Theta Kappa as an advisor at an opportune time because this is a, a great resource that was put together, not just by headquarters staff, but advisors out in the field and some former advisors on our staff that really, you know, kind of took a look at not only what a Phi Theta Kappa chapter will do, but how do you coach your members through those projects and, and that whole process of, of serving as a chapter officer or just serving as a leader. So it's not just for those with a title, but any active member in your chapter. And so there are activities that help them with teamwork, with uh, templates for emails, you know, how to, to send an email that's professional and, and represents the chapter well. Uh, there are other activities that really are focused on leadership, like listening skills, which is a, a very important skill for the chapter to have, especially when they're working together with the administration, and a myriad of other activities. And so that is divided up. It's on our website. You can also download it as a PDF. But as you can see, there's a whole section on college project to walk you through these steps. Okay. And those are the, I'll, I'll skip over this, but that's just an outline of what the activities are in the activity guide for chapter leaders. Okay, so you may also want to know, okay, well, what exactly does an outstanding college project look like? And we do have, uh, again, this is a relatively new resource. It's a journal that we now produce of outstanding college projects, and we call it Change Makers, the Journal of Student Leadership. And our first issue was published last year. We're working on uh, this year's version, but this has about um, 15 or so of the top award-winning entries for college projects. So you'll get to read what other chapters have done, and we award up to a top 50 in the college project Hallmark Award category. So not only is this you know, a way to build that administrative support and get some recognition on campus, but you also as a chapter will have the opportunity to submit your work as a Hallmark Award entry. And that's for both regional as well as our international recognition. When Patty was talking about Catalyst, that's our annual convention. And that's where we present awards on stage to chapters uh, for their projects and, and for individuals as well. All right. So blueprints. All right. So if you are wondering how those uh, award-winning chapters actually carried out a project, how they knew exactly what to do, then the rubrics are where you want to start. And we're going to go over a very broad view of the rubrics today. We don't want to totally overwhelm you, but know that they're um, pretty much listed on this PowerPoint as well as on our website. And the reason why we really emphasize this, especially for new advisors who may be thinking, well, you know, we're just trying to get our feet wet here. You know, we're not necessarily up to thinking about, you know, let's win an award, let's take home a trophy. Uh, but this is such a great checklist for just knowing how to complete a project in the most strategic, effective way possible. And so even if you're, you know, maybe your end goal is not to uh, think about um, trophies, but it is about helping students really develop those soft skills. We want those um, students to have a great leadership experience. And um, given the time frame, especially when you consider that it's the middle of July and December 31st is kind of the last day to have all of your project completed uh, for this round, time is going by fast. And so you want to be able to take as many shortcuts as you can. And by shortcuts, I mean not reinvent the wheel, not you know spend time 
spinning your wheels, but know exactly what it takes uh, to carry out this project well. And so that's why we have the, the project is divided into four primary areas, preparation and planning, leadership development, your communication and cooperative effort, and then impact. Presentation is referring to, of course, the entry itself, the writing mechanics of that entry, but the other four are the ones that you really want to pay attention to when you're uh, sharing this with your chapter. All right, Patty, you can go to the next one. Okay, so let's look at the steps of a, of a college project, and then we're going to show you a slide that kind of uh, lists the specific areas that you as a new advisor can really help your chapter with, because we don't want you to see this and think that this is your responsibility. Um, you are a coach for your chapter. So these are areas that you will be helping make, a, make your students aware of and the steps that they need to take in order to fulfill a college project. But we also know that, you know, especially when you're meeting with a college administration, you want to make sure that the students make a good impression, that they don't overstep or, you know, maybe not contact the right person in order to set up a meeting. And so that's that's a key point of, of helping the chapter really understand the protocol for your campus, what's involved, you know, what the college president would expect if they were going to have a meeting with students. Do they do they want several to come at a time? Do they prefer to come to a chapter meeting instead? All of those things you can help them, um, you know, really determine what's the best practice for your particular campus. But number one, before they even get to the meeting, we want the chapter to take a few minutes at least in looking at the college's mission and their priorities. Normally that's on a college website and that will be a mission statement. It may also be paired with values or core values that a college has a strategic plan that they have in place that really outlines the college's goals and their strategies to meet those goals. And many times a college is very much eager to have a student voice on committees and projects that they're working on. And so the, the fact that a, that a student organization is coming to the administration and not simply asking for help or financial assistance, but is saying, hey, how can we help you with what your mission and your priorities are? And that's that's a conversation starter for sure. And so in order for them to feel a little bit more confident having that discussion with the college president, it's always great if they've you know at least reviewed that information, they can then talk intelligently about it. You know, they don't have to memorize it or make a presentation on it, but they can at least be familiar with it and then help brainstorm ideas if the president is like, hey, I'd like to know what, what you have in mind. You know, what are some areas that you would like to work on. And so that meeting is really critical. Again, if you can't meet with the college CEO, another administrator, a vice president, or a dean is perfectly fine. Just make sure that it's a jointly decided project. Um, even if they ask the chapter to come with more of a presentation, a proposal for presentation, that they still are seeking approval and input from the administration. We don't want a chapter to be so married to their idea that they really don't want to be flexible about what the college uh, would like for the goals to be for that particular project. And then moving forward, once you have the goals for that particular project, the focus area, it's really important the chapter not feel overwhelmed, but know that they can reach out. They're not only going to be working hopefully with other college departments, but they can reach out and work with other student organizations on campus as well. And that's a win-win for everyone because you're certainly not only sharing the responsibilities, but you're also making each other aware of your organization. It's a great Phi Theta Kappa uh, recruitment slash awareness tool as well. We'll, we'll talk about uh, some ways that you can help the students prepare for their role to carry out this project in the best way possible. And a lot of times that is intentional leadership development, you know, finding out what they need to know if they're, you know, working with the college admissions office and they are, have been asked to help 
put together some videos for college recruitment, well, there are going to be some skills that are necessary there. And even if they're sharing responsibilities, they still want to be familiar, at least have a working knowledge of um, the material as well as how to accomplish those videos. And so that's, again, another area for the, the advisor to help with in pointing out those kinds of resources uh, for them to, to know how to do a good job before they start implementing and you know, maybe make more mistakes than they, they um, should have. And that can delay the project. It can also uh, maybe lessen the goodwill that the administration has towards the chapter. So it's really just about doing their homework first. And then making sure that communication stays uh, front and center throughout the project, not just that first meeting, but really having a, a regular update to the administration and then a final report, which can be the homework award entry, if you like, or it can just be a final wrap up meeting with the college president to let them know what those outcomes were. So um, finally, you know, we're and we'll talk about this when you see the rubrics. You you want to help the chapter know that they are, you know, going to be tracking their progress, and so they need to have mechanisms in place in order to get those those measurable ones as well as some qualitative feedback. All right, Patty, I'll go to the next one. So. And just looking at, you know, these are based on what we just covered with the steps of a college project and really trying to think about what your role is. And, you know, I know expectations is always good to be on the same page. And so this is how headquarters sees a chapter advisor's role in the chapter. And, and first and foremost is, you know, when you're attending something like this, we know that you're committed to student success. And if the chapter members are going to get the most out of their experience, it means they're going to be participating in PTK's programs and benefits. And so just letting the, the members know that this even exists, you know, just pointing out the five-star plan and then showing them, you know, the college project and the rubrics that are involved in that so that they have that, that uh, working checklist to implement it. Um, as we said, you know, there are going to be other resources. We, we certainly know that you have uh, many other responsibilities, so we don't want you to feel like that you have to hold the chapter members' hands as they go through this, but helping them know where to go for, you know, for example, looking up the strategic plan for a college or later what resources they can access for those leadership development or info gathering, who are the experts on campus for those items. Um, explaining the protocol, you know, that's, again, I mentioned that earlier, you want them to understand who's who on campus and how to go about in a professional way of meeting with the administration, of making it known that they want to uh, work on a project together and upfront what that commitment level is going to be so that they are fully prepared for that, that they don't, you know, bite off more than they can chew at the beginning. Uh, and then it falls by the wayside in the middle of the semester. And then the Oversee Chapters Hallmark Awards submission. Notice that it doesn't say write, it says oversee. So the, the members are the ones who are writing and editing and proofing, but the chapter advisor can be a coach through that process. So you can be, you know, certainly we've had advisors that can help proofread, but we don't want you to feel like that, you know, they're going to just write an outline and then it's your responsibility to take that and turn it into a narrative, um, you know, an a essay type entry. This is a, this is a prime example of chapter members building their communication skills. It can be a little bit messy. It can be a lot of back and forth, you know, when they're um, at the end of the year and into January working on their entries. But the key is that preparation and having a timeline and so they can focus on that. And then at the end of the day, if, you know, if the entry is maybe they're running behind and it's not everything that you hoped it would be. It's a lesson learned for the members, um, but it doesn't mean if it's not perfect that you can't still turn it in. It doesn't have to be a quality work in order to submit the entry. We want the chapter to kind of close that loop and go through every step of the process 
to get the most benefit out of these programs. Uh, again, for us, it's not about, you know, um, the, the trophies either. You know, that certainly is icing on the cake. We want to recognize uh, chapters hard work and the best of the best, but we also want to emphasize that this is a process. This is a learning process. And so if you have that in mind, that's really going to be the end goal that in terms of being a success or not a success is whether they were able to go through the process from beginning to end. All right, Patty, I'll let you go to the next one. So um, this is just a very quick example. I know you guys as advisors, you know, probably already know your college's mission. You may have the strategic plan printed out on your desk, but we just wanted to show on the next slide that if this is a particular college in California and they're, they had six specific initiatives and really a college project could address any of these particular initiatives. Now it's going to vary, of course, you know, based on what your campus's specific strategic plan is, but it's great if an advisor can be there to help guide the discussion at first when you're showing the, them the, the strategic plan or whatever it is called on your campus so that they understand how a Phi Theta Kappa chapter fits into that. Um, you know, when it's talking about supporting student, faculty, and staff success, we've seen college projects that may be a tutoring or peer mentor program. Uh, we mentioned that um, there can be a video series, not only about recruiting them, recruiting students for college, but letting them uh, become aware of what those uh, student um, engagement resources are the ones that are supporting their student success. But there's also, you know, facilities improvements. I mean, we've seen campus beautification projects. Uh, we've seen chapters that have helped um, campus really step up their recycling or sus environmental sustainability. So there are all kinds of ways. There is not a particular PTK program that you're trying to fit this into. You are only trying to do the college administration's wishes based on what supports their college mission. And so that, that's a wide open field uh, for the chapter. But it's always good to you know, have that conversation with chapter leaders so that they can start envisioning, okay, how do we, what role do we play uh, with the success of a college? Okay, the next one. So these next slides, and I'm gonna really just hit the highlights here. Um, there are four slides that just give you the outline of the rubrics. And we want you to know that, again, this is why I called it a checklist because we, we tried to make them so succinct that it really was uh, breaking down the rubric into uh, very specific points, very specific activities that your chapter is doing in order to get um, the, the graded upon, if you will, at the, uh, for the Hallmark Award entry. So for each statement listed on your left, it, can, it is worth up to four points. And so four points means there's outstanding evidence, three points, good evidence, two, some evidence more implied, and then one point would be minimal or no evidence. So as you're going through that, of course, when you're planning, you see this as a planning rubric, you're going to make sure that these things have been done as the chapter fulfills the project. Um, the one that I would stress right now is that a lot of times chapters will assume that uh, whoever is reading the entry, well, of course we know how it fits into the college's mission. I mean, do we really have to say? Yes, you really have to say. So make sure that the chapter members know that they need to be very clear about that, that that's not something that, you know, you should leave off, but that they want to write very specifically about how this particular project, this focus area uh, was something the college wanted them to focus on above everything else that they could have done, why this particular focus. All right, Patty, you can go to the next one. Okay, so leadership development. Remember I said the, the key phrase is intentional leadership development. And so we know the chapter, of course, if they you know, have a significant leadership role, many of them will learn by doing. But again, we want this project to go smoothly. 
Uh, you've got a very important uh, person who is paying attention to this project, uh, namely the administration. And so you want to be sure that the, the chapter members are confident in carrying out the project. And so it takes time to maybe you know, meet with another department, find out what they need to know to do the project well, and also to take advantage, and I think this is on the next slide, of some of Phi Theta Kappa's resources. Uh, let's see, strategic, okay, go to the next one and then I'll, I'll just talk about strategic thinking. Sorry, one more, Patty, forgive me. Okay, so leadership development. So one of the areas that we have, in, in case you're not aware, is PTK Edge has, uh, PTK has online courses that uh, teach members and they're also available for advisors to uh, go through as well so that you know what's available to, to the students. But Competitive Edge is one example of one of these courses that's focused on soft skills. So all of those communication, critical thinking, uh, teamwork type, body, you know, uh, body language, all of those type of skills that are so important to carrying out a project like this, PTK Edge is one resource. Now that's in addition to what your college has, you know, available. You know, it may be working with your local librarian or resource center, the student affairs office, they may have a leadership development program that they offer to students. And that would be another great way to uh, engage your students and help prepare them for these leadership roles. Um, Patty talked about the regional events. You know, you definitely want to take advantage of those. And when you're writing, when the chapter members are writing about their leadership development, um, the key is to tie it very specifically to how this event or this workshop uh, help them complete this particular project. So they're not just saying, oh yes, we learned about leadership, but what in particular did they learn that helped them implement the project? Okay, next slide. Uh, the communication cooperative effort, again, having a, a plan, you know, that's that strategy that is put into place that, you know, plan your work and then work your plan is so important. And it's really important that more than one member is writing down, taking notes about the process as they go through it. That will give a lot of wonderful detail that is necessary when the chapter is writing up their entry. Uh, so that they don't leave really important steps out of the entry. We want to see how the sausage was made. And so that, that is not just reporting the impact or their overall outcomes, but it's about showing what was their communication plan? How did they plan to keep stakeholders involved? You know, did they decide whether email, uh, Zoom meetings, Discord app, what was going to be the, the main focus for uh, communications. And then that last report, you know, that wrap up of what was accomplished, maybe what needs to still be accomplished. All that is really important because at the end of the day, this project is about the relationship between the chapter and the college. It's not about just completing a project, although that's really important. But if the project, you know, somehow encountered some obstacles or maybe a new direction was needed, the relationship is strengthened when the chapter goes back to the administration instead of just carrying forward, you know, with a new plan or dropping it all together because of an obstacle, but that they go back to the administration and say, okay, this is what we've encountered. What should we do? Because this is a joint project. This is not just a unilateral decision, you know, that we should be making. And so all of those communications um, are really important. And again, the collaborators, why those particular collaborators were um, sought after, you know, what did each bring to the table and how effectively did they work together on this project? Okay, and then finally, the impact of quantitative as well as qualitative. I know advisors certainly know quantitative data, measurable and qualitative data is all about those observations or feedback that you've gotten. Uh, that can be quotes from people that were impacted by the project. It can be uh, quotes from administrators about you know, how this project made a difference. What was it like working with the students? Uh, what was it, uh, what were the lessons learned throughout this process? 
And then more, uh, I, I think this is probably the one that is parroted back the most is the, uh, the item about demonstrating meaningful reflection of how chapter members grew as scholar leaders throughout the project. Uh, think of, help the students think of evidence of that. You know, did someone really improve their public speaking skills? Uh, did they make a connection with a particular administrator or a, a new faculty member that they hadn't before that, you know, really thought, had them think more uh, strategically about what career focus that they were planning? Did they have an aha moment uh, that led them to think about a, a community college uh, problem or opportunity in a new way? We've had a lot of uh, chapters do food pantries, and that certainly can be an eye-opening experience for students. Uh, if they're not personally food insecure, but realizing that they're, they have students on their campus, that this is a, a highly valuable uh, necessity. And so that, that whole process is really looking at the reflection piece of, of helping students make those connections about what they learned and gained through going through this process. Okay. All right. Well, Patty, I think I will, um, this, the last two slides, and these are, these are good for you to, you know, I know we share the PowerPoints. This is just an example of, you know, helping students understand how to quantify an accomplishment that they may not necessarily see as immediately assigning numbers to it. Like it's not the money, amount of money raised or the number of hours given to a project, et cetera. So that's, that's just one example. And the qualitative impact, this was from a chapter's entry where they were really able to give some wonderful quotes that helped, you know, bring that project to life, uh, you know, and really share the impact in a way that, that was providing evidence and not just saying, boy, was this a great project? Because, you know, there's a lot of great projects. So you have to be able to provide that evidence, uh, show and tell with your entry as much as possible. Okay, so um, there is my email address and phone number. We're always happy to help brainstorm and answer questions. I, I know that we've thrown a lot at you guys this, this afternoon. So if there's anything that we can clear up though at this point, please let us know. I think you can even unmute or use the chat. Crystal clear, I take it. <laughs> All right, well, we're not going anywhere. So, so Patty, I'll turn it back over to you, but um, you know, this is, this is just an opportunity for us to kind of share the information and let you think about it and uh, follow up with us as necessary, so. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, everybody, for um, attending today. Please let us know and reach out. Um, we have one more session related to um, college projects later on this month, and uh, chapter advisors and leaders are um, welcome to attend. And we encourage you to send your chapter leaders and members to that one so that they can learn about it. August is all going to be about honors in action. And, of course, we will meet again with all of you in the new advisor development program as well. So please, uh, we are uh, here waiting to hear from you if you have any questions. And we will get a copy of the PowerPoint and the link to this recording shortly. If you weren't able to, to, to join us, if you have any questions after reviewing these things, please reach out to either Jennifer or myself or anybody on the team. And so thank you so much. Question. Oh, okay. Question. Yeah. Must all levels be accomplished uh, accomplished or jump right to five star so you have to complete uh that is a really great question um yes. so you you can complete things in different orders so you can complete something in level one and then jump and complete something in level three but you have to complete all four of the uh, levels to get credit for the five star level so you can't you can't just do part uh, you can't just do the things in the five star level and get credit for five star. So, um, so, but you don't have to particularly do them in the order that's on 
uh, the five star chapter plan. I hope that that made sense. If not, uh, Jennifer Macon, um, jump in. Yeah, no, I, I think that was great. I was just saying that you can um, you can work on activities simultaneously. It's always uh, a best practice if you can, and this may be something that you can start in 2023, but ideally you would work with the chapter to maybe do a college project in the spring semester and then spend the rest of the calendar year focused on the honors in action project. So you're, you're not having to do them uh, at the same time, but just keep in mind that there are two primary projects that a chapter does if they're, um, if they've set a goal for five star and that's college project and honors in action. And so the other items on the five star plan are really just the basic level, the basic activities of any Phi Theta Kappa chapter and that's inducting or recruiting new members and uh, as Patty shared, getting involved in your region. And so it's, you know, these, the two projects are the, the things that will take up you know, the most time out of everything. And so those are those are items that you're probably going to work on several months out of the year instead of, you know, doing a, a project that's uh, one and done. Mm -hmm. But yes, know that you're you can do them simultaneously. And as Reagan said, you're working on you may finish level two, but you still or you may finish level three, but you still may have one more recruitment period to go for level two. And so that might get finished after you've completed a higher level. I always <laughs> hoped that I could do the college project in the spring and honors and action fall, but I was never that, I, I, I never made it there. I, I had six years as an advisor before coming uh, to headquarters and I was never organized enough and I'm a pretty organized person, but I never, I never made it there. Well, in, in, in truth, that. some chapters really want, you know, it's like the spring is kind of the wrap up for the, the outgoing officers and it's more celebratory. It's, mm -hmm. it's getting the homework award entries in and then attending regional convention. And so some chapters really do prefer to once the newly elected officers are in, and sometimes that's after catalyst. So April, May, then that group is doing both the college project and honors in action. So there's no wrong way to do it. And that's why we have things on a calendar year so that you can decide what works best for the chapter. And I would say the other thing is because of the nature of community colleges, your students are always turning over, right? You don't right. have usually right. have a lot of students repeating uh, for another year or so. You have to continuously be training your students about what college project and honors in action are. So, uh, so I never found the time to both train them what they, what was go with what they needed to be doing and um, get that college project done that early. But more power to anybody who who, who does. <laughs> Yeah, that was also my dream, you know, to do college project in the spring and honors in action in summer and fall. We got all we, we almost got there. It, it kind of overlapped. The biggest part was implementing the college project and it because of budgeting and all of that, it, it, it was early fall when it was finally implemented, but all the beginning work happened in the spring and um it was a pretty good, a good year point. that year. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah, because you can get, even if you're not fully finishing, mm -hmm. at least you're getting some big chunks of it out of the way mm -hmm. as and early as possible. And you utilize, you get to utilize your current team and then the new team. Like I always paired right. them up for that so that, yeah. you know, there would be uh, some continuity there. That didn't happen every year, but uh, <laughs> it was nice when it did. So, okay. Any more questions? That was a great question. Thank you. Um, I put in the uh, chat a link to the chapter development page where you can go back and see all sorts of recordings related to Five Star and uh, some other things that are helpful, whether, whether they're under the new advisor program or the general um, sessions that we have, and also a link to the Five Star program. But please always feel free to reach out. And I encourage everybody, honestly, set your goal at five. We will get you there, I promise. So uh, if you, it, I know it sometimes it seems daunting, but uh, it, it can be done. It can be done. Yes. And we encourage you to do it. So, 
Well, thank you again, and we will see you uh, soon, and we hope you have a great rest of the day. Stay cool, everyone. Stay cool. <laughs> Bye. Bye.